Welcome to Zoom O'Clock with your host, Tessie Anthony de Nassau. This podcast brings you enlightening discussions with leading experts and public figures directly to your ears. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Zoom O'Clock with your host, Tessie Anthony de Nassau. Today, I have a fabulous guest, as I always do, the youngest or one of the youngest DJs in the world, DJ Michelle. Uh, Hi, Michelle. Hi. How are you? Good, thanks. And you? Good, good, good. Where are you, my darling? Um, right now I'm in Dubai, uh, UAE. But I was born in Azerbaijan. But we moved here when I was very small, so I basically grew up here. <laughs> very nice. So how old are you, Michelle? I'm 10. You're 10 years old. So tell me, DJ Michelle, when did the love for music start? Since I was a baby, actually, because my dad, I always saw him DJing. My dad is a DJ. He's the reason I started DJing. And um, since I was a baby, since as long as I remember, I was just like, fascinated i was like oh my gosh when he was uh djing when he was practicing and then i kept asking him to lift me up and then i checked all the buttons i pressed everything i was making such a racket and then um one time i pressed a certain button and the music stopped and i was like who turned off the music <laughs> very and, good but it all like started I started DJing professionally when I was five. Uh, I asked my dad to buy me DJ equipment for my birthday. And then I was like, Dad, I decided I'm going to be a world famous DJ. <laughs> that is amazing. And you are in Dubai. You know, one can follow you. I am, what is, one second. I just get the hashtag specifically. I am DJ Michelle on Instagram and you have 148,000 followers. That is incredible. You are a <laughs> Nike ambassador as well and do um, so many other different things. So tell me, um, how was your first DJ experience once you got that set then at your birthday from your dad? Where was it? And what? What? how did you start doing it yourself? Were you nervous? Yeah, I was uh, nervous. So the first time I DJed in front of people was actually when my dad was playing in Dubai Mall. And I was just dancing around. And then I decided, like, I wouldn't try in front of other people. And I did, like, some basic stuff, everything I knew. And everyone was clapping. And I was like, yay. <laughs> but, but my performance, like, alone was at a friend's birthday party. There was, like, I don't know. 50 people or something they were dancing around and like at first I was so shy it was like this and then I just like started dancing and like it got into me that sounds really really amazing so you said you also started drums now and you play piano you love skateboarding and you love ruby you ruby cubes so tell yeah, us a little bit about about your life in general what is your day what does your day look like as, as a very famous young DJ? Uh, so I wake up and sometimes I go and walk with my dad when we're walking our dog, Pablo. Then when we come back, um, sometimes we go to the gym. I go to, to the gym in our building with my dad. Uh, then when we come back from the gym, I play around with my toys or chat with my friends a little bit. Then I start my DJ practice, which is like 30 minutes. After my DJ practice, I also have drums practice. And sometimes I include piano or bass guitar too. And I also have my Rubik's Cube practice. Especially now, I practice more than usual because um, I have a Rubik's Cube competition on September 11. And I'm really excited. Yeah. That is amazing. So how long does it take you to finish a Rubik's Cube? These are the Rubik's Cube I'm going to be competing with. This one is about 30 seconds, but my record is 22. Wow. Uh, this one takes about nine seconds. And this one takes like seven seconds. These wow. are not all Rubik's Cube, but these are my best ones. 
That is amazing. That is so. The first one has like what uh, fifty tiles around. Yes, it it. This is the classic Rubik's cube. Yeah, the classical one exactly. And, yeah, and it has uh, nine pieces on each face, and there's six pieces. Yeah, very good. Well, just for the people who are listening to this, because not everyone sees the video on YouTube. Of course, everyone can look at the YouTube video, but a lot of people will tune in from the phone. That's why I want to make it as visual as possible. But that is amazing. So I'm going to finger, I'm going to put my fingers and my toes for you uh, to become number one. Have you already won competitions doing that? Uh, this is going to be my first ever school competition, but me and my friends just race a lot because I have like five friends. And we have a group chat, so we just Zoom when we're not, like, together. And we just do races, because there's, like, this timer, the professional timer for Rubik's Cubes, and you do this, and it starts, and mm -hmm. then we just race. The person who finishes first wins. Usually I win. I love it. I love it. It's so geeky, and I'm a geek, and I love this. So this is going to be your first competition for the Rubik's Cubes, but... DJing, you are already an all-timer in the competitions. You were at the DJ Championships, which is kind of like the Olympics for DJs. What yeah. happened there? Tell us about it. And how did you come out at the end? So last year and the year before that, I was competing in a World DMC DJ Championship, which is like Olympics for sports, but uh, DMC for DJing. And it was online, which made it easier for, for me because if it wasn't I'd have to go all the way to London <laughs> and uh, yeah so I was competing on something called portable uh, on something called a portable and it's basically a mini DJ set and yeah it's very fun so on the first time I was competing like with about 85 professional DJs they were all men all were grown-ups mm -hmm. and I was the only one there and I got 14th place and my, got, and my dad got 10th so I didn't get to the finals and then the next year I was even more determined and I started training like a month ago and I doubled up my practice so like usually it's 30 minutes then I did it for one hour and then I was like I want to win I want to win I didn't win but I got ninth place which be, but my dad didn't compete at that time but I still beat him Mm -hmm. <laughs> last year he got 10 so I got in the finals but I still didn't win and this year I'm determined to win I have to, <laughs> you have to. this is amazing and I love the determination you know every woman out there every young girl out there every young boy out there needs to hear this determination you have and the drive you have for something you're passionate about because I think it, I, I think you're extremely inspirational and you just know what you want and you go to get it. So that's what we want. So, um, so yeah, good luck for this year. When is the competition? Will it be online again? Uh, yes, it will be online. And I actually don't know the date for the competition. What? It's this year, no? Well, next, year. next year, yeah. Ah, next year. Well, you still have time. I'm sure you're going to do great. Please let me know how it went. Um, I'm sure you're going to be great. If you were ninth this year, you're going to be at least top five next year. At least. And, of course, I hope that you're going to win because you deserve it. And I thought it was funny, as you said, you know, we, you were the only female really among all of these men who are much much older than you um how did that make you feel i think it's so courageous and you're so brave because a lot of women older women even also in my age they they are too afraid to stand up against men and compete and look at you there at 10 years old you did it already twice how does that make you feel it was very weird at the first time, and <laughs> I was like, this is so weird, but the second time it kind of felt natural already. It, I was just competing, you know, because most DJs actually are men, more than women, so I already <laughs> felt that, felt it before, so it was kind of natural. This is so, this is so amazing. I am 
Michelle, I'm blown away. This is so incredible. And, uh, you know, you will inspire a lot of, a lot of young girls out there. Also in the Middle East, Europe, everywhere. Because, you know, it's it just shows that you can. You can do it. And it doesn't matter the age as long as you know what you're doing. And um, I think it's fantastic. So going over to another topic you mentioned before that you have something exciting coming up for starting of 2023, which will be released in New York. What am I talking about? Um, that is, so when I got 14th place two years ago in DMC, um, a publishing company called Blackstone uh, contacted me and they asked me if I wanted to write an autobiography with their help and yeah publish a book about myself I was so excited and it's going to be released in uh, New York at the start of 2023 and also in Sharjah also this is incredible Blackstone you know people they dream of having a book published by Blackstone and they have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of um possible book uh, books to read through and they just contact you I think it's fantastic do you know a title of the book already? Sorry? Do you know what the title of the book will be? It's going to be I am DJ Michelle. I am DJ Michelle. Well, world, watch out. I'm definitely going to have a copy. I have not a few that I can give to my friends who have daughters because I think everyone should read your story. Um, what specifically is in the book, if you want, um, which we haven't talked about yet, like some sneak peek? What can you share with us about your autobiography, which is a must know about DJ Michelle? It's basically like about me, about how I started DJing and about the DMC competition. And yeah, I, it's also like a bit how it goes, you know, in my life and school and everything. And also a bit about books and because I actually like I'm obsessed with books. I read like I can read like four hours nonstop. I can like bury my face in a book and <laughs> nonstop. <laughs> it was when um, I was smaller, I used to go under my blanket at night with a flashlight and read. And then I was reading so much that my parents were like, I was eating and like <laughs> my parents were like, I can't eat normally. <laughs> and yeah, it's also because. Um, I write like stories, short stories by myself. It's also like fantasy and type. So I shared some of them, a few of them um, in the book. And yeah, the rest, you will see it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. This is just a sneak peek. People need to get this book. And I love that you love reading. I think reading is really, you know, the wealth, uh, the biggest wealth in the world is time and knowledge. And I think, you know, um, just keep reading. I think it's so fantastic. That said, what yeah. is your favorite book? What Which book did you read where you were like, whoa, totally amazing. Everyone should read this. What was it? I have a few, actually. First one is Harry Potter. Obviously, everyone would say uh, Harry Potter. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. the, second, uh, the second one is also a series. It's called Inheritance Cycle by uh, Christopher Paolini. It's very interesting. Though it's a bit over my age, the books are like this thick. It's very like interesting. I can't stop reading. I'm like, oh, what's gonna happen? <laughs> and yeah, that's pretty much it. That is very good. And I think it's amazing um, that you read also books over your age. You know, it's important to stimulate your brain and just get, yeah, get going because you are like, such a geek, which I love, that the books for your age are already <laughs> too small for you. You already, you have already outgrown all of that. There's a story in my school, because um, now I'm online, uh, I'm uh, learning in an online school, but before uh, I was in like a regular school, and then there was a library, which I went to every time, and the first time I went there, it was for first graders, I was in first grade back then, and it was like so easy for me. Some kids in my class couldn't even read. And there was like, I don't know, four lines on a page and a lot of pictures. And I was like, what is that? So I took books for like sixth grade or seventh grade. And one time uh, uh, 
principal, she caught me and she was like, there's no way that you can read that. And then I was like, yes, I can. And she was like, show me. And I read a chapter. And then I was made student of the year. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's important, you know, when when people question you, especially grown-ups, you know, you can do what you can do everything you like if you believe in yourself. And I think it's important as well to show the grown-ups that you can. And yeah, by stating that, you put your foot down for all of the other young girls and young boys. Um, yeah, I think I think I'm just really blown away. I I I don't know what to say here. This is just incredible because, as you know, I have also teenage children, and yes, they read. Julia specifically, she loves reading. She's 14. Um, but you know, when I tell them what do you want to be, if I would ask you the question, where do you see yourself in five years? What are you telling me, Michelle? Still into music, still DJ, <laughs> performing on like gigantic stages. <laughs> if you would have a, a magic wand, with who would you love to create a DJ set? Well, who is your top know. DJ? Who is your top DJ? Me. Oh, of course, I love it. <laughs> Put your mask on before helping anyone else. I love it. So um, yeah. as the metaphor, right? So you and then if you would have a choice of a female yeah. or a male DJ, who would it be to do a set with you at a big at a big convention? Well, I have a few um favorite DJs. So out of club DJs, DJs to play in the parties and stuff is Bob Sinclair. And out of like scratch DJs and turntablists, they're more famous among like scratch DJs um, is DJ Craze and DJ Cuber. Very nice. So tell me when you say scratch DJ, because not everyone will understand what that means. What does that mean, Scratch DJ? I know what it is because of my boys who also play music, but what is it for the people who don't know? So uh, basically, Club DJs, they just, you know, mix up songs. So one song, then another song, then another song, then another song. More for parties. But scratching is basically you take a certain beat or instrumental that doesn't have any words in it or something and then you take a sample so for example someone saying yeah or something like that and then you use the crossfader some it's like something that opens and closes the sample to make like sounds and the sounds like you put it on the beat and it kind of sounds really cool it's hard to explain i'm not sure right. everyone will understand i'm on your instagram right now and i look at your videos is this I assume this is like scratching, right? I don't actually hear it. Excuse me? I don't hear it. So... Oh, you don't hear it? Oh, no. <laughs> and I don't see it. <laughs> oh, yes, that, that, is, that is scratching. So is it scratching? Yeah, that is some cool scratching going on there. Also, people, if you're listening in and looking at it on YouTube, go and follow I am DJ Michelle because she has some amazing content. there. I love your style as well when you're mixing around. Who dresses you? Who inspires you to dress the way you do? I, I, I choose my own clothes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is really, oh my God, you are, you know, without without uh, being too childish about what I'm saying, but I think you are the cutest young girl I have ever seen. I think it's amazing what you do. Yeah. I think it's so inspiring. And uh, so when can we expect you in Europe? Have you ever played in Europe and will you soon? Actually, I've been, uh, you know, America's Got Talent, right? Yeah. So in France Got Talent, the French version, uh, I went to Paris like a year ago. But I didn't pass because the judges didn't understand what I was doing. And they were saying it's offbeat. But um, scratching sometimes sounds offbeat when it's not. And two people said yes and two people said no. Mm -hmm. But then I saw, I saw one of the judges uh, in a cafe when I was walking with my dad. And I was like, 
See you in Tomorrowland. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See you later, alligator. When I'm on stage yeah. and you're cheering me on. I love it. Ah, yeah, okay, yeah. I, I assume that not everyone understands um, when it comes to really, you know, specific ways of doing music that uh, scratching maybe is not on everyone's radar um, in the music industry, specifically when you're so traditionally music, right? Probably the two people who said no, they're probably into completely something else, no? And some people also uh, comment like, it's fake, it's not real, you're not doing anything. And even like when I'm going live in TikToks, a lot of people say it's fake. And what I say is like, yeah, it's fake. Yes, it's fake. I've been doing fake stuff for like almost five years already. <laughs> and yeah, it's so fake. And then at the end, I will say, I love you haters because it actually makes me laugh. It doesn't make me sad at all because <laughs> I, I mean, it. they know real. They know that it's real. They just want to get their attention. But <laughs> there you I go. And you got this right, you know. There will always be haters, Michelle. I have them too. And, you know, that is just people, they put the mirror in front of themselves and the insecurities they are portraying or they're commenting on the trolling. It's just problems they have of their own lives. You know, it's jealousies. It's just, you know, envy and whatnot. And I think, you know, you will always have them, but it, you do the right thing. Just laugh about them, you know. And, and you know, I think, I think it was um, Cardi B who said, you know, I love your haters because you're buying my stuff. You still go online. They still give you views, Michelle. So there you go. They still check you out, which is hilarious. And, um, you know, so keep your smile and keep your good heart because, you know, you're not doing music for other people. You do it for yourself first. And um, if people like it, they like it. And if not, too bad, right? That will not affect you. So, um. Would you be able to give us a little sneak peek of your music? We talked about it offline before. And um, your mama mentioned that you might be able to scratch a little bit of music for us. Would it be possible? Yep. Yeah, um, th my dad is going to connect it now. Perfect. Thank you, dad. I need this song. Someone's ready. No stress. Before we start scratching um, some music here, what is there one sentence you want to tell the young girls listening in right now? One thing you want to tell them? Sorry? Before we start scratching some music together, is there one thing you want to tell other young girls listening in and young boys right now? A message from, from you to them of inspiration? Because hey, hey. the sound just went off for some reason I didn't hear you can you hear me now yes yes so before we start scratching some music together tell me one sentence for the young girls and young boys listening in and also women and men something inspirational from you to them this is something I always say so the first thing is to believe in yourself and never give up if you try something and you don't succeed, just try again and, and again and again and again and someday you'll get it. And also, like, you have to kind of think about it negatively, like, oh, I didn't get it, I'm quitting. Like, never quit. If you want to get it, if you want it really badly, you'll get it. And also, nothing's impossible. Like, you know, people did so much fantastic stuff, which people which others thought that it's impossible. So yeah, nothing's impossible. Everything's possible. If you just believe. Wow, I love it. I would love I would love to hug you right now. I think you are amazing. <laughs> so let the scratching be begin. Stage is okay. yours. Okay. Okay, I I have to put the beat first. Yeah. I have my beat dead. Okay. Okay. I have to wait for the 
You know, I play saxophone since I'm seven. Maybe we can jam together one day. And so that has been 30 years now, too. And I, sp I play a lot of jazz. And I can totally feel the beat. And I think you this is amazing. I think you are incredible. And when I come to Dubai in March, the latest in 2023, I would love, love, love to see you and, um, and jam together. <laughs> And also, I will, I will actually try. I will talk to your mom to see if I can get you to Europe because I think you would have a lot of fun here um, to see if we can do something with other gifted musicians such as yourself. I think um, I think there could be some great stuff we could do. But this is it for now. Um, I already, we went over time, but you're just an amazing human being. I think you're incredible. I love everything you're doing. I love your energy. I love your smile. I love your attitude. I love your positivity. <laughs> I just love you, Michelle. Can I say that? Can I be Auntie Tessie? Auntie Tessie from Zurich from now on? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we keep in touch. I will write you for sure. And thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. You're really, really thank fantastic. You. Please, please, last words from you, Michelle. I want to say hi to all my fans. <laughs> Hi everyone, I love you. <laughs> and yes, that is amazing. I'm sure the 150,000 followers you have on Instagram will also get some sneak peeks of this podcast. And um, yeah, I send you much love, Michelle. And yeah, stay as you are. You are fantastic, and you will be so successful in all ways. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this Zoom o'clock. We hope this discussion was insightful and has provoked some new ideas for you. Please share and subscribe. If you like to keep in touch with your host, you can find her on Instagram under Tessie underscore from underscore Luxembourg and on Twitter under Tessie underscore DE. <laughs>